What is up guys, Jarv here, back today jumping into Destiny 2. Now in today's video we're taking a look at this week at Bungie and specifically some of the big technical changes coming with Beyond Light and some of the awesome new weather systems that come along with that. So if you want to find out the latest from this week's blog, be sure to stick around and check out the video. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a rating down below. That super helps me out here on the channel. And if you're new here and want to keep up to date with all the latest Destiny 2 content, be sure to hit subscribe as well. But without further delay, guys, let's jump into the video. So this week at Bungie kicks off with a recap for the new trailer covering Europa. If you haven't seen this trailer just yet, I'll leave a link to that in the video description below. Be sure to check it out. It's an awesome trailer and shows off Europa in all its beauty. Now, yesterday we got some information as well, which they do recap in TWAB this week around some of the weather systems that have been introduced with Beyond Light. So the weather systems on Europa will have three stages where you either have clear skies, a mild storm, or a heavy storm and this will change organically as we play on Europa itself so this will affect our visibility and also the way that we interact with combatants in the play space so be sure to let me know your thoughts on those changes down in the comment section below now moving on they talk about the Xbox Game Pass so Forsaken and Shadowkeep became available on the Xbox Game Pass on the 22nd of September so if you have a subscription to that you now have access to the last two DLCs and a perfect amount of time left now to take advantage of those ahead of Beyond Light, which launches on November 10th. Now, with the extension of the current season and Beyond Light weeks away, we see the return of Iron Banner from next week. So this will kick off on the 29th of September at 10 a.m. Pacific and end on the 6th of October again at 10 a.m. Pacific, which is the normal reset times. So if you're still chasing down a good forward path or even the sidearm, then be sure to jump in. It is a power enabled activity. So be sure to get your power level up to take advantage of the loot that's on offer. Now Bungie moves on to talk about some of the technical changes that are coming with Beyond Light. So with Beyond Light fast approaching, it's time to shift the approach slightly. So when Destiny 2 launched three years ago, they had no idea that in 2020, they'll be announcing a trilogy and at the time, Bungie's arc for Destiny 2 would look a lot like Destiny 1 with a couple of expansions and then a sequel. Now with no sequel in sight, they are shifting some of their tech to help advance Destiny 2 in the longer term. So they've shifted the mission scripting model to run on a physics host rather than a mission host. So what this means is a couple of things that we are likely to notice is that the scripting environment changed many behaviors in complex ways. So we may see interesting behavior changes or bugs in pre Beyond Light missions, things like public events and similar things of that nature. Now Bungie have been working hard to stamp out a lot of these bugs and in some cases these issues were a lot more severe and this is an example of why the Prophecy Dungeon will be unavailable when Beyond Light launches later this year. Now another cool feature is with the face to face joins in social spaces so you can now join up with your fire teams, our friends without having long tower reloads. Now, as well as this, they've also revamped the content building and patching pipeline for speed and install size. So with the tremendous size of Destiny and our complete shippable content builds that are frequently taking north of 24 hours, Bungie have made some investments to bring that down to under 12 hours, which has now resulted in a bunch of changes for our content and patching formats going forward. Now, with this in mind, due to these changes, Beyond Light will require a full re-download across all platforms when it launches. So it's going to be a bit painful, especially for those on slower connections. But to help mitigate that, they're planning to enable Beyond Light preload sometime in the evening on November 9th. So with this in mind, this should allow at least 10 hours to download the game before the gate opens. Now, the install size for Destiny 2 has shrunk by between 30 and 40 percent. So due to a combination of culling unused and replaced content, install size optimizations and moving some of the content into the content vault, Destiny 2's install size will shrink to between 59 and 71 gigabytes. And this will vary depending on your platform. And these improvements should help Bungie control install size moving forward for the years to come. Now the third and final change that they go on to talk about is about the character face system. So they know how our guardian looks is very important to us and they've wanted to add more player customization options to Destiny. Now with some of the technical changes, they've upgraded to a significantly more capable system, which should hopefully allow them to leverage and add more player customization options in the future. So what we'll notice when Beyond Light launches is that your guardian's face may look slightly different to what it does now. And the final section here is around the relit portions of the European Dead Zone and Nessus. So during the early stages of Beyond Light production, Lighting and Sky's teams had the desire to provide a visual refresh to the two remaining Destiny 2 Year 1 destinations, and that being the European Dead Zone and Nessus as they enter their fourth year 
in rotation. And to that end, teams have performed global lighting updates to a number of locations across both destinations. So these will all be things we'll notice when Beyond Light launches, and they help bring the visual quality of these spaces up to the current lighting standards, which provide a fresh coat of paint to some of the year one locations. Sadly, we don't get any images of some of what these changes look like, but be sure to let me know your thoughts on these changes coming to Beyond Light down in the comment section below. Now in the final section of the TWAB, they cover some of the new emblems that are coming in Season 12, and these include things like the featured artists, the fashion show, the new movie of the week emblem, and also the new Bungie Bounty emblem. So the Bungie Bounties are currently running across all platforms in the lead up to Beyond Light. So if you don't have the Aurora Clash emblem, which is the one that's currently available, then you'll have an opportunity to get a brand new emblem as of next season. Now, as well as this, though, any of the mentors, ninjas and shields which help out in the Bungie community, especially inside the Bungie forums, will also gain access to brand new emblems. And we can see them here. And as you can see, they look very unique. So be sure to keep an eye out for those out in the wild. So there we have it. That's going to wrap up this week at Bungie for this week. As I said before, be sure to let me know your thoughts about all the technical changes and the new emblems down in the comment section below. Now, if you have enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a rating down below. That super helps me out here on the channel. And if you're new here, I want to keep up to date with all the latest Destiny 2 content. Be sure to hit subscribe as well. I'm going to jump back into the game as always, and I will catch you all again very soon.